what's going on guys welcome back to the channel christopher mini weather here with dead stock barbershop and today we got a nice taper and enhancement cut followed up with the razor on the eyebrows so this is a first time customer to the shop and as you can see she came in do ragged up i thought we was gonna have a waiver cut but nope she took it off and had some finger coils underneath one thing I want to show you guys, and I'm gonna let it kind of play out, but it will be sped up, is the consultation. So in this consultation, as you can see, she has hair that's overgrown, as well as some twists that are not completed in the back, or they are twisted, but she doesn't necessarily want some of them. So even though she knew she wanted a taper, she did not know exactly where she wanted them to start at, as far as the height in the back. So I'm gonna make sure before I do anything, that I get a thorough and proper consultation. I want her to enjoy this haircut and not be upset that her haircut did not come out right. And remember, a great haircut is completed before you ever pick up your tools or your scissors. It starts with a thorough consultation. So right here, we got a cordless Andis Masters with the number one guard closed with the grain. We're just gonna debulk this area, get it nice and smooth as if you were doing any other taper or wave cut. So right here, I grab my trimmers and we're gonna set in our bald line. I like to do a little arc so I can get the outside of the taper a little darker than what the middle will be and it'll just give a cleaner, blurrier effect. And as you guys know, I have a combo cutting system where I use two different clippers, but I'll start it off with my red effects from Babyliss. The system is open, close, halfway, quarter, and we're just gonna follow those steps until the fade comes together. So right now, I just closed it all the way up and as you can see it's pretty much blending without even having to go halfway or a quarter of the way so i'll close it up halfway and it was really done after that switching over to the second portion of my combo cutting system i got my andis masters and i'm open halfway quarter close i'm going to work my way up and then i'll drop it back down if i see any lines or any dark spots and what this does is it's cross checking your work i fade up and then i come back down and I overlap the same section that I just cut with my babyliss. So this right here is a number one and it is all the way open and I'm just stretching the skin. I'm pulling the hair up out of the way, trying to make sure that I don't cut into her hairline or anything like that. Make sure that you guys are not afraid to get up as high as possible. Like I say in all my videos, if that moving blade is not touching that top line, where her hair is parted, then you're not cutting that hair up there. So you have to make sure that you're going up high enough. And as you see, I'm working that lever. I'm just opening it up, opening it up, and I'm closing it down. As you can see, I'm getting pretty high up there. What you guys will notice is that I do get the guard stuck on her hair, and I do want you guys to see that, so I left it in the video so you can see what to do when that happens so that you're not fearful to cut the hair. It shouldn't be dark patches, dark spots back there. And as you can see, I'll do the same exact thing on this side. I'm working my way from left to right, right to left, and I'm fading it in, the number one open, then I'll close it up halfway or I'll close it up all the way. Whatever I see needs to take place, that's what I'll do. And I'll just make sure that I'm fading it in, I'm hitting every line, any dark spots that I see, and I'm getting it ready because right after this, I'll come through with my zero guard. Since my masters are zero gap, they do a great job when I close it all the way up with that one of almost taking the line out from my master's open no guard to the one close. So that definitely takes, it eliminates some of the work that I have to do. So it makes this next step very easy, very simple. You get through it pretty quickly. It's already coming together. I don't have a whole lot of work to do and I'm just looking for dark spots. And what you'll see right here is I'm about to snag her hair right there what you do is you turn your clippers off and you can just untangle it as long as that moving blade does not get up there into the hair you will not cut their hair customers will freak out they'll think that man this person just cut my hair but really you're not cutting it it just snagged a little bit on the teeth because they do have those hooks on the back so you don't have to worry about it you just keep going keep pushing like normal and i continue to cut and you have nothing to worry about so now that we're done with the back, we're gonna move on to the sides. We're gonna knock both sides down just to get that part out of the way. And then we can move on into the taper portion and the edge up and the eyebrows and then we're good to go. This is a simple haircut. This is a fast haircut. And this is a haircut that anybody should be able to achieve. So going back into our system, we are open, close, halfway, quarter. 
and you'll see that it just comes together there's not a lot of work to do her hair is fairly thin on the side so you don't have to work too hard you don't have to create panels you can just use your corners to fade out and that's one thing that i learned as i was cutting her hair make sure you guys are paying attention to what works if you normally do your panels and you're going all the way up if you realize that you don't have to because the texture is thinner then switch it up save yourself a step save yourself some time so i'm just going in straight corners when i get up higher and then i'll grab my purple zero and i should be good to go and i'm following the same steps that i did in the back open halfway quarter close purple zero and i'm looking at those dark spots and i just want to lighten them up a little bit i want this to flow and be a smooth transition so right here i take the guard off and i start fading those sideburns so it can blend on down do not hesitate do not skip this part of the cut i see a lot of people who have a nice taper and they never fade into sideburns so now that I'm done with the taper, I'm gonna go in and just throw the line up in the back and over the ear. You know, I get questions pretty often where people are asking me like, how do you cut back on your time? This is one of the things, like I'm already on this side, I've already finished the taper. So what I'm gonna do now is just grab my trimmers and start outlining. And one thing that you'll notice as you start to outline is that imperfections in your fade or in the taper area will start to pop out and you can grab your clippers right there and you can do a little detailing and then you go to the other side and you finish the cut. So I start right here hitting a C cup and then I'm gonna go to the sideburns, edge the front of the sideburns up and I'll connect those two lines and you get a perfect arch. Just keeping it nice, simple, being efficient with what we do. So we're working our way up from the bottom and we're gonna reach it up to the top and connect the two lines. That is a simple method of doing sideburns. And as I said earlier, imperfections pop out at me once I threw that line up on there and I'll just blend it out. It's just a matter of caring about what you do, caring about your work, your work ethic, and making sure that the customer looks and feels as good as possible. And one thing that I do, man, it's kind of like a Mayweather fight. You know, first round, he feeling the person out. And he don't really go in until, you know, the second round of the fight. You know, this is the second, third round of the cut. So by now, I know how her texture is. And I'm able to do things that I didn't do in the beginning because I've learned as I was cutting. So one thing that I did differently was what you're watching right now. I went straight in with my purple zero after my babyless because I noticed I was able to fade it out pretty simple. I learned the texture already, you know what I'm saying? Now I can go in with my masters open and it shouldn't take as much work on this side as it did on the other side. You learn as you go. And so next time she comes in for another haircut, it should be easier, it should be faster, and you can get your speed up, you can get your confidence up, and you realize that you're making all the money that you really wanna make in this industry while enjoying what you're doing. Now moving on to the next side, we got the taper done, so we go behind the ear into that back line, and we throw a line on there, cleaning the neckline up because we're already there, why wait? So I look at both sides and what I'm doing is comparing the angles on that edge up. I wanna make sure that both of them are as symmetrical as possible. You don't want one side angled in deeper than the other. And just make sure that you're cleaning it up. So I'm preparing to hit that C cup. The only difference is I started on the, on the sideburn first, but I'm still gonna go and connect the two lines. So it's really up to you. However you gotta do, get the job done, whatever you gotta do, it's really up to you. I can't tell you that you're wrong for starting at the top or the bottom. Yeah. All right, so looking at our edge up, I wanted to make sure that I taper that length down so our edge up can last a little longer. Most of that stuff is coming off anyway, but I want it to be as smooth as possible. And so right here, I'm looking at the bottom of, or the top of the C cups, and I'm trying to verify that they are as equal as I can see. You know, we're not robots, we're not computers. So we're just trusting our eye, but I try to make it as equal as possible. And now I go into the vertical bars and I'm gonna set those in. It's gonna help me see that top line a little better. And while I'm there, I notice I could clean that line up as well. And now I work my way from the center on out. Same technique, I don't change it. You know, if you got something that's working for you, it's no reason to change it. And I'm just making sure I get that line as clean as possible. 
Do not be scared. This is what you call a professional pushback. You can't leave her natural line there because she's going to look crazy. It's going to be too small. She's the type of person that if you edged it up like that, or even if you didn't take it out far enough, she'd ask you at the end of the cut to move it back. You know what I'm saying? I get people like that. So you have to remove that fear. What I like to do, I use the eyebrows as a guideline or a reference point of where I should put that, that line at. So right now I'm just detailing it out, getting it as crisp as possible because we are going to enhance this cut. So we're just setting it up before the kill shot. I'm a very detailed person and I'm borderline OCD when it comes to cutting hair. So I'm always looking as I'm edging up, I'm looking for dark spots. And as you can see, I had to go and attack those. So right now I'm prepping for enhancements. So I'm cleaning the line so I can put the no drip applicator. Y'all already know I'm rocking with the Tune 45 ecosystem. I got the Shine Cuts Hair Color Card as well as the Beam Team Coreless Compressor XL and the no drip. Tune 45 no drip. Those of you who do not know, it is a color that is designed for your skin. It can last you, it's water repellent. You know, you can get it wet. I don't advise you do, but you can get it wet and it's gonna last. You know, you wanna make sure that you clean that skin so it can last because it is an alcohol-based product. So what I'm doing, I'm just spraying it, using every angle of that card to match up with the edge up and it just makes it simple for you. One thing that I like to do, as you can see, I'm spraying it into the scalp, not only the hairline, but the scalp. I see a lot of people that will neglect this right here, what you're seeing me do, and you'll see where they put enhancements, but they refuse to go off in the scalp so it doesn't look as natural as possible. So right here, I'm using the Barber Magic Pencil from Black Ice, and I'm just gonna conceal that lineup by putting an outline on the outside of it. This is just another part of the enhancement. It's gonna make it pop out, make that color stand out, and people are gonna really notice. She was like, I've never had this, and I just killed it. She had pictures the next day, and I was like, you know what, we might as well. You know, you got your, I think it was like baby shower or something like that, and I was like, we might as well hook it on up. So now that we got the outline on there, we're gonna go in and blend that color in. We're gonna blend that pencil line in, making sure that we're not going into the hairline that we already set, but just blend it into the outside of it and lock that color in. And it's just gonna look really nice at the end of this. For those of you who haven't seen this technique, my guy Get Beam does it all the time. So shout out to him for making this popular. You know, it was a point in time where people really didn't like enhancements. You still got barbers who don't, but hey, it don't matter. It's about you and your client, what y'all like and what looks good to you. So going in with the razor, I'm just gonna blend the rest of that out, take off the excess pencil, and it's just gonna give it that nice ash line effect that won't go away. All right, so jumping straight in, man, we're gonna go and do these eyebrows. This is a service just to get your money up. It doesn't take long. It's less details than a beard, but it's really important because people are looking at this person right in their face. So you just wanna try to get it as symmetrical as possible. I know everybody's eyebrows are different. You know, nobody really has the same eyebrows. As you can see, her left side and her right side are really different. But what I do is try to make sure that I can get them as clean as possible, as close as possible to the other. So I'm looking at left side, right side, and I'm just making sure that it is close as possible. And just in case you guys forgot what she looked like, as barbers, we don't control who walks into our shop, but with the thorough consultation and a proper execution, they can leave out looking like this. I appreciate you guys for sitting for this 14 and a half minute video. Thank you guys for coming through, watching my channel. Make sure that you smash the like button. Make sure that you share this video. Make sure that you comment below because I will respond to everybody who leaves a comment. I thank you guys. I appreciate you all. Take care. God bless.